Hello, this is Edith Neumeyer, and I'm the author of the book, The Mystery of Adam. Before my nose is, is getting too bad, I'm going to have to make another video. I'm getting a, a runny nose, and my nose is just dripping and dripping. And so before I get a nose like a, a Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, I think it's time to do a video. So please excuse me when I use my... Kleenexes, but I don't know what it is. I think I have a little virus up in my nose. So today I'm going to talk about dispensationalism again. Actually, I'm going to talk about uh, the what the result of dispensationalism. I know I have talked about dispensationalism, and so if you need more information about what dispensationalism is. Uh, look up my videos. I may put them on the bottom in the comment section. So, um, or what is it called? Uh, whatever, on the bottom. But today I want to talk about um, the result of dispensationalism. So lots of people right now are waking up to the fact that dispensationalism is false teaching. Okay, again, what is dispensationalism? That other word is futurism. Okay, futurism. And it was um, heavily uh, marketed by Schofield and applied in a commentary called the Schofield Commentary or the Schofield Bible. This is how it got into lots and lots of churches and seminaries. Lots of all kinds of denominations, including, of course, Baptist, Presbyterian, and so on. So it is widely spread amongst so many Bible teachers, and I have said that. But now, lots of people are starting to wake up, and guess what? The false teachers, this Antichrist spirit, has already Satan, who is really the author of the confusion, of course, has already put another doctrine in place to confuse the people that are now coming out of dispensationalism. Yes, that is true. I mean, people are just waking up and this... You know, idea is spreading and spreading that dispensationalism is wrong, that this end time uh, uh, theology that was preached by dispensationalism or futurism is wrong. And already Satan has another false doctrine to replace it. Now, I don't know if that doctrine even has a name. I didn't even know dispensationalism, name dispensationalism, or futurism even existed. I didn't even know that, okay? But this new doctrine now acknowledges that dispensationalism is wrong, but now throws everything out, okay? I mean, everything that dispensationalists believe, including the rapture. And that's what I want to talk about today. This uh, movement to throw out this rapture, okay? Now, of course, the reason why we were confused about when the rapture happens in the first place and why we had this pre-mid and post-trip um, confusion is because of dispensationalism, right? But now, we're not throwing out tribulation okay we're keeping tribulation in place but we are just simply saying that the rapture really doesn't happen it is part of the second coming of jesus of course it is a part of the second coming of jesus but people the second coming of jesus and the day of the Lord, which many believe is just one day, is a thousand years. It's not just one day at the end. 
So when Jesus comes, returns, it's a progression. There is, uh, it happens within more time, not just one day, but it can be actually years, okay, years until um, Jesus finally establishes his kingdom. Now he comes back for his bride. That's the first thing that will happen, okay? And that is, of course, the rapture. Now, when does the rapture happen? It happens at the beginning, okay? It's, all, it's, it's like the beginning of the day of the Lord. The day of the Lord is when Jesus returns, okay? Second coming. The first thing that will happen is he will pick up his bride. Why? Because the next thing that will happen is the wrath of God. And God does not want his bride or Jesus does not want his bride to be around when he is going to kick the pans off the unbelievers and the beast system. Okay? He doesn't want them around. Why? Because the wrath of God is horrible. Okay? Very horrible. It's catastrophic. It's absolute catastrophic. People read Please read the seven trumpets and the seven bowls. And it's not, so many people think it's symbolic. People, it's not symbolic. The wrath of God is going to be real. Okay? There is going to be real things happening. Now, when in Revelation 6, the people of this earth are scared because they see the things that are coming, and are hiding in the rocks, okay, Revelation 6, 12 to the end, then you know it is real. It is not just symbolic. These people are scared to death. And I believe in Mark 13 said the same thing, that these people are scared because they see what is coming. They see the sign in, in, the, in, in the heavens, okay, that things are, are different. They see the sun going dark and the moon turning blood red. The, the stars are falling and the heavens are, uh, um, what is it, scrolling. Uh, uh, they're wrapping up like a scroll. That is all scary people. Okay? Stars falling, that means we have more meteors coming down. I have talked about these things so many times. Okay, that is the kickoff for the wrath. And during that time is when the rapture will happen. There is no doubt because it is biblical. Okay, especially when you look at Revelation 6, 12, and the people say the wrath is coming. And in the next chapter, you see the, the, the multitude in chapter 7 of Revelation, you see the multitude in heaven. Okay, the multitude is in heaven. And then the wrath of God is being poured out in uh, chapter 8 through 11. I don't understand how things can more be more easy. But, of course, if you have believed lies, lies, lies all your lives, and now you're coming out of dispensationalism, and you've been so indoctrinated with false doctrine, it is very easy that Satan can deceive you, continue to deceive you even more. And that is exactly what is happening with many, many people. Even uh, these big, huge uh, gurus, okay? Big, huge gurus. What is one of the guys that was teaching that? Anderson. I don't remember his first name. Anderson, you may know him. He is one of these big guys, right? That have that 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 are uh, passage in these mega churches, and he did this. Uh, at least people from his church did this really great um, uh, uh, video about dispensationalism and and just show the truth about dispensationalism. But then they turn around and still continue to be deceived. Or do they do it in, on purpose? Okay, are they already? Um, uh, captured by by um, the by Satan, and are they continue to be used as wolves in sheep's clothing. That's of course possible too. 
that this is actually a plan, that these people are not deceived, but they're doing it on purpose. Um, I think most of the people that are deceiving are most likely deceived themselves, okay, which is pretty sad. But it also means that these people do not have the Holy Spirit at all, at all, okay? So please do not be con uh, uh, deceived. Do not be deceived. When you do your research about dispensationalism, okay? And I have seen now several videos where people are warning and are informing you about dispensationalism. Several videos. Matter of fact, if you go on my group, Great Deceptions of the End Times, I actually posted two videos that people advised, okay, advised, and I looked at them and there was great information in there about dispensationalism, but they snuck in this little thing about the rapture, okay? This little thing about the rapture. So be on your guard. Be on your guard. Understand, understand the timeline of the end. Understand the timeline of the end. Okay? I think that's very important. And since I have plenty of time today, I'm going to let you know what the timeline is right now. Okay? I'm going to go by... Um, Revelation. Now, I am not going um, into too much details uh, and give you exact Bible verses. I can gear you in the right direction, but I do not have the verses in front of me. So I can only kind of approximate where these things are. All right, let's start. And I know lots of people are confused about this timeline as well. Okay, about this timeline. Timeline starts, of course, with the destruction of the temple because that finishes the time of the Hebrews or the Jews. Because at the time of Jesus, or let's say after the Babylonian captivities, only the Jews returned to Judah. Okay? So God finished up the time of the Hebrews with the time of the Jews. So Daniel prophesied and said, 70 years are decreed for the people of Daniel, which were the Jews. Okay? 70 years. And these 70 years came to an end after Jesus died. Okay? Jesus' death happened during the last week of Daniel. After the last week, I mean, after Jesus' death, the Jews still had some time to repent and accept Messiah. I know they killed him, but he, they still had time. Jesus still made the covenant, the new covenant, okay, with the Jews. Actually, of course, the covenants are always made with all the people, okay? But he said he came to the Jews first, the lost sheep of Israel first. So he came to them, offered them, the new covenant died for them on the cross to start this new covenant. And then he gave them even time afterwards. Some, of course, say three and a half years. Um, and of course, they're not years because they are according to Daniel's time, right? So he gave them time afterwards to repent. But they decided not to have anything to do with Messiah. They openly rejected him. And then the uh, time went to the Gentiles. The proclaiming of the gospel, okay? This is not dispensationalism, okay? This is not dispensationalism, even though there's time periods, biblical time periods, that has nothing to do with dispensationalism, okay? So now the time went to the Gentiles or the proclaiming of the gospel went to the Gentiles. And Jesus said that in um, Luke 
21. Now, where was it? Luke 21. I think it's 24. Okay, 24 or 25. He said that the, when the time of the Gentiles is fulfilled, the sun will go dark. Again, I already said when the sun goes dark, what happens? The wrath of God starts. The rapture and the wrath of God. Okay? So, let's go back, though, to the timeline that I started. So, the Jews rejected Messiah. And the proclaiming of the gospel went to the Gentiles. The next thing that happened during that 2,000 year period of time was the destruction of the temple, just like Daniel prophesied. Jesus used the abomination of desolation, the name that Daniel prophesied about the destruction of the temple. He used that to describe now in Matthew 24, Luke 21, and Mark 13, the destruction of the temple, okay, and of Jerusalem, and the dispensation of the, the dispensation um, or disbursement of the Jews into all of the world, okay, really destruction of the Jews. If you read um, some of these sources that I have mentioned before, one of, it, one of them is um, the destruction of Jerusalem. And I will put it on the bottom as well. This little book, The Destruction uh, of Jerusalem and the Irreversible um, Proof of Christianity or something like that, or Divine Christianity or something like that. I'll put it on the bottom. You will see that the first part of Matthew, okay, the first part, first half of Matthew 24 is about the destruction of the temple and Jerusalem. And the Jews were killed. Almost all the Jews were killed. You're talking about the Holocaust, okay? The Holocaust was nothing compared to the destruction and the killing and uh, the slaughtering of the Jews during that time. Okay, and who brought it on? I'll tell you right now. Yes, the Romans were used, but God brought it on upon them. Okay, it was the wrath of God poured out on the Jews. And maybe that was actually the time of Jacob's trouble. That's what I'm thinking. That that is actually, it was actually the time of Jacob's, uh, Jacob's trouble. Many people think Jacob's trouble is the same as the great tribulation or even the wrath okay at the end but you know what i don't believe it i believe jacob's trouble is really the wrath god poured out on the jews for rejecting messiah that's really what i believe i have not done my research about jacob's trouble because you know what it is not very much in the Bible, and I actually have to look it up. Where is the Bible even talking about Jacob's trouble? Because every time I read it, it's the wrath of God. Okay? So when it talks about the wrath of God, it is actually at the end. But I need to do a research on Jacob's trouble, and I advise you to do the same thing, really. To really understand what that means, Jacob's trouble. So don't look it up. Don't look it up and, and, and take somebody else's and word for it okay look up Jacob's trouble and see what is in the Bible and go there okay so anyways that is the time when God's wrath was poured out on the Jews okay so after that the times of the Gentiles started now Matthew does not say anything about that time, that 2,000, 2000 year time period. Does not, not say anything about it. He says that there will be tribulation to the end. That's all he says, okay? So the saints will go through tribulation. That's all he says there is no. He talks about the destruction of the temple, temple in Jerusalem 
and then he goes straight to the beginning of the wrath of God. Okay? People don't understand that. If you read Luke and Mark, it's easier to understand because Jesus or they only said uh, or only wrote down the question about the destruction of the temple. They didn't say anything about the end times. Okay? So people are, can, uh, should be less confused about it. So anyways, let's go back to the timeline. Because now we're going to go into Revelation. Revelation starts and John says that shortly after the visions he had. Shortly after. Okay, He says that. Read a, a Revelation, the first chapter. Actually, the first chapter, first verses. It's right in the beginning. He says, John... He's going to tell you what shortly is going to happen. Shortly. And he says that even at the end. Okay, these are the things that surely are going to happen. Now, if he tells you twice, that should sink in. That what happens now, what he's telling you is going to happen. Not in the future. Sometime in the future. Okay? Futuristic. Remember? Futurism. We are not going to be stuck in futurism or dispensationalism anymore. We're going to listen to what the Bible is saying. And Revelation, John is telling you what shortly will happen. Then uh, John goes into detail into the different um, churches. And I believe the different churches, and again, people say, oh, that's dispensational. No. The different churches, for me, represent different periods of um, church, or not church history, but the Gentile history, okay? Gentile history. Because see, and there's the crux, the church doesn't just include the Gentiles. The church includes all people from the time of Adam, all believers, from the time of Adam, belong to the church. Church just simply means assembly of believers. That's all it is. It's an assembly of believers. And all believers that have believed in Messiah from the time of Adam, through the pre-Hebrew time, through the pre-Hebrew time, and of course the Gentile time, they all belong to the church. We're talking about the Gentile time. The Gentile time is divided into seven periods. And that is biblical. Okay? That is biblical. And these different periods are symbolized by these seven churches. Okay? I know somebody was asking me that, and, and, and I just want to clarify that. I'm really thankful for all these people that are throwing these things in, in um, you know, or put these things in front of me. Because... I'm going to use them in my videos, okay? So they're not dispensational, dispensational periods. They're just simply periods. They are periods, um, you know, in history. It's just the way. There are four beasts. Those are four periods. There are four kingdoms. They're periods. I mean, you, you just have to work with that. The same thing with the seven churches. They represent seven periods of the Gentile era, okay? Uh, and I'm going to use Gentile era because that's what Jesus used. He didn't use the church age. He used the, the time of the Gentiles, okay? So the churches, the letters to the churches are to the different periods of churches, okay? Right now, we are in the last period of of the Gentile period, which is the <clears throat> church of Laodicea. Okay, that's where we are right now. Matter of fact, we are almost at the end. Okay, it's almost over. And a door is going to be opened in heaven, and the wrath of God happens, and John goes in heaven with the, the raptured saints, which he always sees in heaven. Why? Because he is going up with the rapture, 
okay he's going up with the rapture he writes these letters to the churches and then right after that the doors open and john goes up into he says come up hither and john goes up and that's the time when the rapture when the the time of the chintas is over and the, the people go up okay so now then we have a little other things okay that he sees in heaven but the next thing that happens is the seals and the seals again start at the beginning the beginning of the time of the gentiles it now overlaps these seven um churches okay it overlaps with these seven churches and we have seven seals okay so now we see what's going on on this earth when the time of the gentiles is happening Okay, that time is also a time of great tribulation. And I'm not going to call it that period of time, great tribulation, because the time is called the time of the Gentiles. It's all it's called. Jesus called it that way. Okay, but it is a time of great tribulation for the saints until the rapture. Okay, which is then at the end of the times of the Gentiles. Okay, so you see the seven seals all the way to the sixth seal. That is when the rapture happens. That is the kickoff of the wrath of God and the completion of the time of the Gentiles. Because then we are again at Matthew 24, 29 and what is it i think it's luke 21 24 i believe and i don't remember what mark 13 is remember when the sun goes dark that also gets us to revelation 6 okay that all overlaps so when we overlap the seal the sixth seal with matthew 29 and um luke what is it, 24, when the sun goes dark and we overlap, then, of course, the seals, the five seals, has to happen before the sixth seal, okay? Which we do not see in Mark, uh, uh, in Matthew, Mark, or Luke, okay? That's that period of time where we do not have any instructions from Jesus to any of the gospel uh, people, writers, gospel writers, okay? It's the silent section. It's a silent section. So now then, these seals happens, happen to, during that time of the Gentiles. And they have already been fulfilled, people. Okay? Uh, please, you need to go into history to see all the things that happened during history. We had plenty of conquering. Okay? Plenty of conquering. I'll tell you, the beast, uh, the, the ten horns of the beast, in connections with the little horn of the beast, did enough conquering. You should just read a little bit about European history to see how much conquering um, the, the, the Spaniards did, the, the, the Portuguese, the, um, the, uh, the English, the Eng England, okay? I mean, they ruled the whole world, okay? The whole, the, the whole world. They went out to conquer the whole world. And all in the name of Catholicism, okay? They say in the name of Jesus, but really it was in the name of Catholicism, okay? Make no mistake. So they all ruled and conquered. And of course, then we had wars. How many wars did we have in Europe where people were just killed left and right? 30-year war. 30 years. A war 30 years. I mean, one war after another. Pestilence. Famines. I mean, you name it. It was horrendous. And believe me, these seals do not overlap with the first part of Matthew 24 because Jerusalem went through plenty of these 
things as well. Wars, rumors of wars, pestilence, uh, famines, they went through that before the destruction of the temple. Okay? That has been going on forever. Some people say, oh, the seals, you know, uh, uh, correlate with the first part of Matthew 24. No, people. No. Okay? No. The seals are within that time frame of the time of the, the Gentiles. Okay? Just before, remember, the sixth seal, we know where the sixth seal is. We do know it. Okay, it overlaps with Matthew 24, 29, uh, um, Luke 21, uh, 24. And then, of course, you have Revelation, the sixth seal, and you also have that in Mark. We know that. So the other seals need to be prior to that. Okay, and there is no gap anywhere. There's no gap. There could be a silence, but there's no gap. So the seals happened exactly before that. The martyrs in the sixth seal under the, the altar, they were uh, uh, killed throughout history during the Dark Ages, during the Inquisition, um, during the Roman time um, when they were martyred uh, in the arena. They were crucified. They, they were torn in pieces. I mean, all these things. Please, you need to do your historical, um, um, follow these historical accounts. Okay, I cannot take that away from you. If you want to talk uh, about end times, you have to know what is happening in history. That's just the way it is. Okay, so now we are at the rapture. Okay, we know at the rapture. And we know that now the wrath of God starts. We see that um, in um, chapter 6. In seven, the, the saints are in heaven. And in eight, the wrath starts, okay, with the seven trumpets, okay? After the trumpets, of course, there's uh, overlap in um, Revelation. Then you have Jesus Christ establishing his reign, okay? Just bottom line. There is nothing in between. Nothing in between, okay? Not a thing. Again, the seven bowls overlap with the seven trumpets, okay? Simple. So now I didn't talk about the man of lawlessness, did I? When does he come into place? Well, I already said the, 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 the last beast of Daniel is still around, right? There's only four beasts of Daniel. And that last beast had ten horns, which I said were the European empires that were conquering the whole world and the little horn papacy that was ruling them all or controlling them all okay so where's the the law the the uh, man of lawlessness the little horn okay the man of lawlessness who made all kinds of different rules and changed time and season and whatever okay i'm not going into detail because that's a different story that's where he fits. So how long has the Antichrist been around? It was since the beginning. Since the Roman, actually before the Roman Catholic Church, because Pope was also the name for each emperor, okay? Before, or 